Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Young. I'm a CTO at Amuji. Amuji is a US based Series B stage startup company, and we provide ammonia powered decarbonization solution. We're about two and a half years old, and we have raised $220 million so far. So throughout the journey, I have seen so many great changes in the energy and clean tech industry. So today, I want to share my perspective in energy transition, as well as Amoji's journey as one of the clean tech startup companies. Global investment in energy transition has set a new record last year, hitting 1.1 trillion US dollars. For the past two decades, 6.7 trillion was invested, so one sixth of the total investment just happened in one year, in 2022. An energy transition includes clean tech and climate tech, such as solar, EV, energy storage, carbon capture, and hydrogen. Here, we have to note a steady growth of renewable energy sector. And the interest in renewable has been rising due to concerns around the energy security, as well as strong drive for decarbonization. And throughout the growth of the renewable energy, we saw so many changes in the energy transition. So wind and solar have rapidly decarbonized the United States electric grid for the past 20 years, making shares of the renewables over 20%. And renewable energy is set to transform the global energy mix becoming the largest source of electricity by the end of this decade. However, these predominant renewable sources have a fundamental problem. There is a temporal and spatial discrepancy between supply and demand. That means, if you look at the map, renewable sources are abundant in places where it is not consumed the most, and it cannot be produced at the moment when it is needed. That's why we need energy storage solution. Technology for converting electrical energy into chemical energy and vice versa will be critical to store, transport, and release excess electric energy when and where we need it. And the perfect example here is battery. And battery was able to decarbonize various sectors of the industry benefiting from renewables. But to fully benefit from the growth of the renewable sources, governments and industries are turning their eyes towards hard to obey sectors, such as heavy industries. For example, maritime industry or shipping accounts for 3% of total global greenhouse gas emission. That is equivalent to the emission coming out from Japan. And this is bound to increase to 17% if we don't take any action right now. Unfortunately, conventional electrification methods, such as batteries, are difficult to be adopted in these sectors due to limited energy density. And that's why we need highly energy dense clean fuel to decarbonize these sectors and meet net zero 2050. And that has brought a lot of attention to hydrogen. Hydrogen being carbon free in nature and having high gravimetric energy density can be a great fuel for decarbonizing these heavy industries. And these industries share huge markets, such as trucking, shipping, power generation, and aviation. And this hydrogen-driven energy ecosystem is called hydrogen economy. Hydrogen economy is the fastest growing sector in the energy transition, showing more than tripled investment year-on-year -year basis. And we see many companies investing and introducing various hydrogen-powered solutions in the market. But there is a significant drawback to hydrogen. Being the lightest element in the universe and having the lowest gas density, storage and transport of hydrogen is extremely difficult. So we need heavy infrastructure to make the hydrogen economy work. So this has brought my attention to liquid chemical, which can carry hydrogen in the form of liquid, like the fuels that we are using, so that we can bypass the problems of hydrogen. The key here 
is whether we can produce these chemicals using renewable sources and convert this chemical back into electricity when and where we need it at scale without any carbon emission with reasonable economics. And that's why I saw great potential in ammonia because ammonia, NH3, doesn't contain any carbon in the molecule and can be produced from renewable sources. And as a fuel, ammonia has more than five times higher energy density than lithium-ion battery and even higher than liquid hydrogen or compressed hydrogen. That means under the same volume, you can carry more hydrogen in the form of liquid ammonia than hydrogen itself. And another huge benefit is the established infrastructure. Ammonia is the second most traded commodity in the world, and we have been using ammonia for more than 100 years as a fertilizer and chemical feedstock. So vast amount of infrastructure is already there, and we know how to store and transport ammonia. But there's one key piece missing here with all this benefit, and that is no commercial technology can convert ammonia into electricity until now. And that's where my company, our company, Amoji, is innovating to convert ammonia into electricity and to unlock the full potential of ammonia. The process is rather simple. The ammonia is cracked into hydrogen and nitrogen, and the produced hydrogen is fed into a fuel cell which converts hydrogen into electricity. While we produce hydrogen in the process, we are not dealing with complicated logistics of hydrogen because energy is stored in the form of ammonia in dense liquid form. And the core technology that we have is nano-engineered catalyst material, scalable and efficient reactor design, as well as compact system integration. So you can think of us shrinking down this huge chemical power plant into a box, into the size of a cabinet. So this allows unprecedented high energy density and efficiency without any carbon emission. And water is the only byproduct. So we saw a great potential of this technology to be adopted to decarbonize hard to obey sector and meet net zero 2050. And to prove the technology, as all the startups do, we have began the journey of technology demonstration. With seed round funding, we didn't want to demonstrate the technology in the lab, but we wanted to show it working in the field, in, in the end use application. And we chose a drone as a platform. And that was the very first ammonia powered drone flight achieved by Amoji. You might be wondering why drone out of nowhere? Drone. The reason why we chose drone is not because we are trying to decarbonize drone industry, but because if we can show our system working on the drone platform, which has high energy and power density requirement, that means it can work on any vehicle platform which has lower or less stringent energy density requirement. So after proving this compactness, we wanted to show the scalability. So we purchased a John Deere tractor and took out the diesel engine, retrofitted with our system so that the tractor can run based off ammonia. And we took our tractor into a farm in the upstate New York to not just show the technology, but show the ammonia infrastructure. As I mentioned, ammonia is used as a fertilizer, and this farm was already using ammonia. So we just brought up the tractor, and we were able to charge it using uh, the ammonia present in the farm. And recently, we demonstrated the very first ammonia-powered Class A truck. Throughout this series of demonstrations, industries and partners were really excited to see us retrofitting these uh, existing vehicle fleet rather than building vehicles from the scratch because this shows a fast route for commercialization. And now, the team is building the very first ammonia-powered tugboat. As I mentioned, maritime industry is out of option right now for decarbonization. There is really few options 
And we want to show that ammonia can really decarbonize the industry. And we are getting a lot of inquiries from potential customers who want to adopt our technology to decarbonize a fleet of vehicles. And by the way, the name of the boat is Ammonia Kraken, so, and it will sail uh, later this year, so make sure to check it out. And with the technology demonstration and showing the feasibility of ammonia, we were again able to raise $220 million from a global investors who share the same interest and who see the same problem that the next decarbonization has to be in the heart to a base sector. More and more investors are interested in next generation of startup companies, clean tech startup companies like Amoji. And to understand the future landscape, it will be important not to just look at the technology, but also to look at how market is changing and regulations and policies are forming. And regarding those perspectives, it's a great time right now. And great changes have happened and will happen in the energy transition. However, we have to do more. It is expected that we need three times more investment in energy transition to get us on track for net zero 2050. And as solar, but this is a great challenge, but great challenge comes with many opportunities. Like solar and EV have successfully decarbonized various sectors of the industry. Next, decarbonization will be hard to abase sectors. The things that I learned as a startup co-founder uh, is that you don't get to sleep a lot. So if you're trying, thinking of doing a startup, make sure that it's noted. And kudos to everyone working in the startup industry, and especially to Amoji's team. But really important thing is that nothing can be done alone. Whenever I think about great challenges that we uh, uh, overcome, many achievements, the moment when drone was flying for the first time, I was surrounded by many people who share the same vision and passion who I truly appreciate. So by taking this chance, I want to urge you to join to make us make the sustainable future. Together, we can do it. Thank you.